So now in this video, we're going to look at uh, this circuit right here. And first thing we're going to do is close this top switch. And the uh, components are not wired in the exact same order that you see on there, but they're in series. That is the main thing. And uh, the capacitor is in parallel with those two uh, circuits. But in any case, you can see the green LED lit up while I push that button. That's because current was charging the resistor. And then with this circuit here, if we press the other button, then the capacitor discharges. And you could see the LED light up there. And so now we'll take a quick look at uh, the voltages involved. There you can see we're not down to zero volts, even though we discharge that. We will talk about that later. Anyways, the uh, alligator clips that come out of this oscilloscope right there, I clipped them to jumpers and the jumpers to the board. The voltage we're gonna look at, the uh, red probe is in relationship to ground, zero volts right there. And uh, so we didn't discharge all the way. We are going to, uh, might as well zoom in so you can see a little bit better. We'll push the button to charge the capacitor. And now you can see we fall short of the 9 volts. Also, you can see that it rapidly charges at first. You saw the LED get really bright at first. And then the LED got pretty dim pretty quickly. And that uh, kind of stayed dim. We had a little bit of current still flowing through. You can see that uh, we still get a trickle. But we got pretty much fully charged uh, right away for the most part. So this is uh, one volt per division. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven right there. That's because this is a green LED. We are using a nine volt power supply right there. And it's blocking about two volts at uh, low current approximately. So at very, very low current and uh, at higher currents, it blocks a little bit more but there you can see a slight glow now when we discharge it same thing we have a sudden drop and then it kind of levels off over time and they're about one and a half volts it uh, kind of stops conducting and uh, over time you'll get a little bit of a leakage maybe the voltage will drop slightly or whatnot so it might not stay one and a half forever but uh, that's pretty much where it ends as far as the LED is concerned so now wiring this up was pretty uh, straightforward. We got a couple switches on the board. They're the uh, most finicky. They got the least flexibility. So I put this one to the positive rail to the top there. This one to the negative rail there. So these components are in series. When they're in series, order does not matter. All that really matters is that the diode is put in the right uh, direction. Otherwise, we can just connect them in series to the uh, positive side because it's a polarized capacitor. So what we're going to do will set our distance about halfway with the capacitor and the capacitor is a 470 microfarad capacitor we can charge it up to 50 volts we're way short of that the uh, negative side has to go it's uh, good to put it to the negative rail in any case it needs to stay more negative than uh, the positive side at all times other than you can discharge it completely but this side cannot get more positive that side has to uh, stay the uh, more positive side when you have a charge now we'll grab a uh, 470 ohm resistor again zag value does not matter but uh, 470 is pretty good for 9 volts and as we saw before the capacitor does not fully charge to the 9 volts and does not fully discharge to the 0 volts so in fact we're dealing with less voltage so we could uh, lower the uh, resistance but uh, we're going to stick with our 9 volts and uh, at least 470 ohms of resistance now the LED again it has to go in the right direction so now the green LED it blocks about 3 volts with uh, higher currents and as you can see at very low current it blocked about 2 volts and so I just did that because I only have 8 squares on my oscilloscope so this uh, blocks more voltage than the red LED kept us from going over and uh, red LED might have kept us from going over too but uh, in any case, we have the green LED there. So now we have our path to charge the capacitor, as you can see there. So now, once the uh, capacitor's charged, it'll trickle its voltage down over time. And these green LEDs, there's, there's practically no current going through it, but it's enough to get it to light up a little bit. So we're slightly raising the uh, voltage of the capacitor. It's really dim there. Now, we will come to the other side. So again, order does not matter. And... Uh, they're in series, but uh, it's the connections 
and what everything does that matters. So we want an LED to light up. So this time I'm going to grab a red LED. It blocks less voltage, helps us get our capacitor down to a, a lower voltage right there than a green LED would. Again, doesn't really matter, but for the purposes of demonstration for this video, we uh, are going to use a red LED. So I can see it's a little hard to uh, see there. Long lead is going there. That's the anode. That's the anode side right there. Cathode is going towards the uh, switch, which heads to the negative rail. And uh, we got the green one there. Short lead, the cathode comes to the capacitor. Long lead towards the uh, positive side. So hopefully you can see that. The light doesn't look uh, too, too nice right now for that. Now we're going to grab a resistor to limit current again. So that helps protect the LED plus sets the uh, time that the capacitor takes to charge. And we could use any value capacitor. I'm using 470 microfarad. I think I showed that uh, before. But any capacitor works perfectly fine. And so we already charged it. Now we have a path to discharge it. And so when we're charging it, the energy is being stored from the power supply. I used a battery schematic. Doesn't matter what you do. Uh, you should probably have the voltage that they show unless you know how to adjust the voltage. And uh, same with the resistor value. You should probably have the resistor value unless you know how to adjust it. But in any case, we have the capacitor get charged when we push that one button. So current's coming out. We're going to work uh, positive to negative. Current comes out of the battery into one end of the capacitor. The other end, there's two plates that are separated. And uh, so one gets more positive, the other one gets more negative. We think a charge coming through there like a loop. So there is a gap there, charge builds up on one plate, and uh, the opposite charge builds up on the other. In actual reality, electrons are being pushed into the negative side and pulled out of the positive. You have an imbalance of electrons. But uh, in any case, we're not too worried about that. We're just going to focus on conventional current because that's how we analyze. Uh, circuits even up to this day now when we discharge it when we hit that button so it's not charged now but uh, when we push this button the uh, the order is uh, different now the resistor or the capacitor even though it's down lower the uh, connection is actually up there so we're coming out of the capacitor actually into the LED and then through the resistor but again they are in series as is the uh, switch one conductive path and so the uh, charges move from one end of the capacitor to the other and uh, until it is balanced again but as we saw before the LED it blocks about a volt and a half at a very low current and so uh, once the capacitor gets to about a volt and a half it can't push charges through the LED anymore and that's where it levels off other than some leakage and uh, whatnot that uh, will occur over time but for the most part it holds steady so in any case thought I would do a quick video on that this circuit I like this circuit because if you really analyze it into detail so I just did like the demonstration here you could do the math of the RC time constant and whatever you have to take into account the voltages that the different LEDs are dropping I'm using two different ones so they're blocking different voltages plus it throws it off a bit because at very very low currents they block less voltage but in uh, any case you run across all of the principles of uh, basic electronics these uh, three components there uh, we have uh, diodes uh, resistors and capacitors uh, a lot of times all three of them in practically every circuit especially the uh, resistors and uh, if it's doing something interesting probably the capacitor so uh, hopefully those more complex circuits they're using the same principles as this so hopefully they make more sense after you see this so please check out one of the other videos I'm posting subscribe and uh, click the bell so that you see all my videos and uh, thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video